Great, so we're going to get started. Listen, first of all, give yourselves a hand for coming today. I mean, amazing crowd. We are here today to say, stop the madness. All right, stop the madness. We have a company right here, right behind us, for whom every month is March Madness, right? Not just basketball. We're all watching a lot of basketball and enjoying March Madness. But for Dominion Power, every month is madness in terms of their energy choices of fossil fuels instead of renewable energy. So we're here to say, stop the madness. So we're going to have a lot of really, really great speakers for you today. Uh, I want to thank all our friends that have helped uh, bring this rally together. We have um, uh, Greenpeace that's here today that's helped sponsor this, Chesapeake Climate Action Network, Credo Mobile, Friends of the Earth, Virginia Alliance for a Cleaner Environment, Climate Action Alliance of the Valley, and the uh, Alliance for Progressive Values. Let's give our sponsors a round of applause. And in particular, I want to thank uh, my staff on the Chesapeake Climate Action Network. And by the way, my name is Mike Tidwell, and I'm director of Chesapeake Climate Action Network. If you work for CCAN, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Thank you so much. These are the people who really put it together and did so much to get us here today. So let's talk about the madness for a second. Oh, first of all, I have a couple of quick announcements. Look, in the, the programs that are being handing, handed out, there's a uh, Twitter hashtag. We really want you to promote the messaging today to tell all your friends, all your relatives, you know, Facebook us. Let's get the word out. We have a lot of people who wanted to be here today, but because of the weather, weren't able to be here. So it's up to us, the witnesses who are here for this historic event, to get the word out. So let's talk about Dominion for a second. Let's talk about their madness. This is a company that swears, that says publicly that they're investing in wind. They run full page ads in newspapers showing wind turbines and they say, we are investing in wind for Virginia. How much wind power does this company provide Virginia now? Anybody know how many kilowatt hours? No. Zero. 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 It's madness every month at Dominion. Instead of wind, instead of solar, what do they invest in? They're oh, about yeah. to turn the switch and turn on one of the last coal-fired power plants ever to be built in the United States in Wise County. A 450 megawatt, no carbon capture, full-blown, Coal burning power plant in 2012. Madness. Boo! Dominion, instead of investing in wind and solar, they want to develop 2,600 megawatts of natural gas, new natural gas uh, generation, much of which is going to come from fracking, from controversial hydraulic fracturing for natural gas. So instead of renewables, they're investing in coal, they're investing in, in natural gas. And as they, as they move forward, their official planning documents, where they've made them public last fall, and they were asked by law, they have to provide, where are you going in the future? How are you going to provide energy for Virginia in the future? And when they run full page ads with wind turbines in them, their official documents say that they're going to increase renewable energy in this state over the next 15 years by point four percent madness and what are they doing meanwhile my ancestors came to this state in the 1780s my ancestors came from Europe as pioneers to the state of Virginia they were hard-working farmers these are people who work with their hands earned every dollar by the sweat of their brow like many Virginians still do hard-working people today in this economy who earn their living, who struggle for their living. How does Dominion make a buck? They charge you, the ratepayers of Virginia, $76 million for zero wind power. They claim they're investing in renewable energy. Instead, they're ripping you off to the tune of $76 million 
claiming it's renewable energy, but what do they do? They buy hydropower from other states and they get electricity from burning wood and they call that renewable energy. It is madness. So that's where we are. We're going to talk about the solutions in a minute. We have so many solutions. You guys are the solution. We're the solution together. We have so many energy resources that we can develop. Now I just want to introduce a couple of speakers who are going to sort of give us the bigger picture. Um, the first is Phil Radford, who is Executive Director of Greenpeace. Phil is a tireless person. There must be 10 Phil Radfords. I remember hearing him 10 years ago talk about how global warming was going to affect beer production in the United States. So you know he got my attention when he talked about that. Phil travels the world in the United States talking about how climate change and dirty energy affects children in the Arctic Circle, affects beer makers, wine makers, affects Virginians along coastal Virginia from extreme weather, a tireless worker to raise awareness both of the impacts of dirty energy and the solutions. Phil Radford. Thanks everyone. I do like beer, I have to admit. I'm going to try to come down here and be with you in the rain. Is that going to mess up the mic? I'll do this. I, I came here to bring you a message from around the world. And that message is that you're not alone. The message is that we're winning globally. The message is that you shouldn't be afraid. And the message is that you should keep fighting. There's a person that works with Greenpeace named Paulo Adario. Paulo lives in Brazil and he runs our campaign to save the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon is as important to save as shutting this plant is, all of Dominion's plants are, because 7% of all the carbon pollution in the world comes from the Amazon and the Indonesian forest from chopping it down. Paulo figured out that all of the Amazon was being illegally cut for mahogany, this huge tree, blood red wood, worth $200,000 in furniture per tree in the U.S., worth more than drug dealing. And these illegal loggers were going into the forest, cutting that tree, pulling it out, and other loggers would follow those roads and destroy the Amazon. He exposed it. We called on the Bush administration to crack down and stop it. The Brazilian government started to crack down. And then one day, Paulo disappeared. For weeks, we didn't hear from him. All we knew was that 350 people in the last 10 years, environmental activists, human rights activists, had been killed for standing up to save the forest and save our climate. And for two weeks, we just sat there having no idea where Paolo was or if he was alive. Suddenly we got a call from an Anglo name from the UK, and it turned out to be Paolo's voice. And there was a bounty on his head. People wanted him dead because he was standing up and fighting. And he ultimately went back to Brazil, passed a ban on illegal logging, helped to stop soy production and cattle ranching from destroying our forests, and helped us solve global warming, or take a huge step towards it. There are thousands of people like that, thousands of people like you around the world who have the courage, who have the determination to stand in the rain, who live in places where huge corporations buy their governments, huge corporations like the one behind us who live in states where we're just begging for some change. And the message from Paolo and all those people is keep fighting. Don't be afraid, even if there's a bounty on your head, even if these huge corporations own our government, because we're winning. I want to bring you a message from Salem, Massachusetts, where citizens around a coal plant owned by Dominion, the Salem Harbor plant, lived for decades while at least 40 people died in their community a year from one plant owned by this company. I want to bring you a message from the communities that fought for justice, that went to the governor, that took it to Dominion, that fought and fought for decades and just won. And I want to bring you a message from the communities around over 100 coal plants that are shutting down in the next five to 10 years. And that message is, take on Dominion. Keep fighting. Don't be afraid. They have a lot of power, but we're winning. Yeah. We're at a moment right now in history, and it's a huge moment. It's hard to imagine this group in the rain being part of a huge moment. It actually reminds me of Greenpeace's founding moment, when actually a bunch of Sierra Club members and reporters and others got on a little boat and sailed out into the middle of the ocean to block a nuclear test. And that wasn't the founding of Greenpeace. That courageous act wasn't it. 
the founding of Greenpeace was them coming back to the dock in Vancouver and people standing in the rain with umbrellas, standing there saying, we want to be a part of a movement to end nuclear war, to end nuclear power, to end coal, and have a green and peaceful future. And we're in another moment like that, where right now wind energy is cheaper than coal, where people like us are willing to stand here in the rain, where people from China to India to Brazil are marching and putting it on the line. We have it a little easier than our allies in Indonesia or China or India, and we're winning. And so I just ask you to realize that while we're standing here in the rain, we're part of this huge arc of history, this arc of history of leaders like us standing up, taking risks, and I think when we take on Dominion, we'll win. So thank you for being out here. I can't wait to march with you on Dominion. Thank you, Bill Radford. Thank you so much. And again, thank you to all of you who've come from all over the state, from Southside, from Northern Virginia, from the coast, from the valley, from Southwest Virginia. You're all here today, rate payers, citizens from across the state. Now I'm going to ask a favor of you. Do you guys mind coming in a little closer? Coming in. Let's feel a little bit cozier here. You'll hear the speakers a little bit better. Oh, that's beautiful. That's great. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a couple more speakers and then we're going to do our thing, right? We're going to form a ring around this headquarters. Woo! The good news is we have enough people to do it. Woo! So after just a few more speakers, we're going to form a historic ring of support, a ring of, of pressure, a ring of hope around this headquarters to stop the madness. But before we do that, I want to introduce my good friend, Kathy Strickler, who's the founder of Climate Action Alliance of the Valley. Uh, Kathy is a tireless worker for climate change, has made her life an example of how to be a great activist and a great person in support of the planet. Kathy Strickler. First, I'd like to thank Keith for asking me to talk today and the rest of the CPAN staff for making this possible, I think. <laughs> I also, I want to really thank the uh, CAV team that came today. We had about 16 people. Especially, I want to put a, a special shout out to the Harrisonburg High School students who came, Tabitha <laughs> Allen, <laughs> and to the JMU contingent also with Ryan, Elise, and Cassie. So, <laughs> Especially to the CAF Steering Committee, uh, they have been a joy to work with. I am here today because of the destruction caused by global warming. I am here today because Dominion Power burns huge amounts of fossil fuels to produce electricity. I am here today because burning fossil fuels puts carbon in the air. I am here today because excess carbon in the air causes extreme weather to get worse. I am here today because extreme weather causes death and destruction. I am here today because I saw this death and destruction while working in Biloxi, Mississippi for two months following Hurricane Katrina. I saw people trying to be strong and cope with the enormity of the loss and the enormity of the task ahead of them, wondering if they could do it. I saw people so stressed themselves, put in very stressful situations so that they went into a survival mode. The experience that I carry with me is one that I witnessed while helping in an understaffed and overcrowded daycare center at Tenth City. There was a tiny baby in a car seat who was not classically cute, so the staff covered his face so they wouldn't have to look at him. There were many other interactions that day that from a psychological viewpoint tore my heart out. Long-term effects of early trauma are devastating to society. I went to Biloxi armed with mental health skills, but they offered little protection from the shock of seeing hundreds of people struggling, some with little love left to give, in an overwhelming situation. Virginia hasn't had our Hurricane Katrina yet, but it can't be too far off. Hear this quote from Governor Kane's Commission on Climate Change. Yeah, thanks. The Hampton Roads region is considered to be the second most populated region at risk from sea level and related storm damage after the New Orleans region. Dominion CEO Tom Farrell may have millions that he could use to personally protect himself from the consequences of global warming, but average Virginians don't. When the storms keep coming more and more often, 
Mr. Farrell may be able to buy himself a huge luxury bunker when we start experience famine. He may be able to pay $1,000 for an apple, but regular Virginians will be left behind. I am here today because I want to protect Virginians and everyone in the world from this destruction, this pain, this fear that causes abuse, depression, alcoholism, and suicide, ruined lives. I am here today because I want people to have lives that are surrounded by love and beauty. I am here today because I want Dominion Power to stop building new fossil fuel-fired power plants. Just last month, the state approved Dominion's application for a huge new natural gas power plant in Front Royal. And then, a few weeks later, Mr. Farrell stood with his childhood friend, Governor McDonald, to announce plans for yet another huge new natural gas power plant. Natural gas is a fossil fuel. And we've heard from scientists recently that natural gas has drilled, natural gas drilled through fracking may actually contribute twice as much to global warming as coal. In Rockingham County, the tiny town of Burpton, 30 miles from where I live, is the only place in Virginia where horizontal fracking has been proposed. The local citizens rose up in opposition and the fracking company backed down. Dominion needs to take a lesson from that company. Our voices are strong and Dominion's executives will hear us. Woo. I come here today because with determination we will get them to seriously support solar and wind instead of just giving lip service. I am here today to stand witness to all of the above, united in strength and determination with all of you. Let us remember what Margaret Mead said and her advice. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy Strickler. When I say wind, you say power. Wind! people up there looking down on you right now. Dominion may have people in this crowd who are saying hi to her in this crowd. Dominion is going to read about this in the newspaper. And you know what Dominion thinks about you? Dominion thinks you're radical. He thinks that we're out of step with the mainstream. That this is radical. Your signs, your t-shirts and everything. But I have a question for you. What could be more radical than transforming the global climate? These are the radicals. This is a radical company. These are radical executives, radical vice president, who are radically about to change our lives until we stop the madness. So let's talk about the wind and solar. We have so much wind power in Virginia. Just offshore wind alone, we could create 10,000 new jobs according to a state-funded research study. And now that it's raining order, I'm going to speak faster. A lot of wind power, we can do it. Dominion is not serious. They're making noises like they're going to do some leases offshore, but they're not planning for it. Solar power. Instead of developing solar, Dominion is actively trying to stop people from developing solar on our campuses and across this country. We need more, and we need now. We're now going to hear from Emily Sherman. She is with the Virginia Alliance for a Cleaner Environment.
dining industry makes no sense at all. That's not an argument that the environmental movement is trying to coin. That's a fact. It's logic. Coma is dirty. It causes destruction. It strips communities of social justice. It stunts the growth of the economy. And it ruins the environment. It's not right that anybody in Virginia should have to give up those rights in order to power Virginia. That's not powerful. That's not empowering. And that's not what Virginia wants. Every day, as a student whose school is provided by Virginia, I am faced with a choice from Dominion Power. I can either plug into the coal industry or study as a gun. It's not right that to avoid that choice, I have to move off the grid completely or invest in energy that's not in Virginia. Like I said, Virginia has so much to offer. One of the reasons is the potential that we have for renewable energy. I want to continue to thrive. Virginia is my home. I don't want to see us continuing to struggle in the grass of the coal industry. I want Virginia to be the leader in the sustainable energy future. I want Virginia to invest in an industry that will provide jobs now and then in my generation and the generation after that. I want Virginia and the wonderful people who live here to get what we finally deserve. Virginia Alliance for a Cleaner Environment, who I'm representing. Under the pretext of uniting the student voice for environmental justice. Woo! The very existence of this organization and the passion that behind every individual who takes part of it just serve as a pretty good indicator of what we want for Dominion in the future. Look around, Dominion. We're here. We are telling you what we want. Woo! Yes. Woo! Next step is for you to take action. The research is done, the support is here. Dominion, have a group of people ever come to you on a rainy Saturday afternoon to tell you how much they love the coal industry? No! Virginia has spoken. We want renewable energy. As a student, I'm seeing my future unfold every day. And I know that renewable energy is in my best interest. I know that it's in my friends and my family and my neighbor's best interest. Yes. Dominion, Dominion, it's in your best interest. So give us the change that we deserve to see. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Phil Ranianu of 350.org, the best global climate group anywhere ever. Phil Ranianu. All right, when I say people, you say power. People. Power. People. Power. All right, I'm going to try to do this people's mic style. You guys ready for that? Yeah. All right. I'm so happy to see all of you. I'm so happy to see all of you. Here at Dominion Headquarters. Here at Dominion Headquarters. We are the Davids. We are the Davids. And they are the Goliaths. And they are the Goliaths. And the Davids sometimes win. And the Davids sometimes win. And the fact that you all are here. And the fact that you all are here. The fact that we all are here. The fact that we all are here. About to surround Dominion Headquarters. Send them a message that we're not going to give up. The same way that we didn't give up. When we were fighting the Keystone Pipeline. Put our bodies on the line. And we surrounded the White House. We convinced President Obama to stop the tar sands oil from coming in from Canada. Here's a fact. Here's a fact. Trans Canada and the oil companies spent outspent us 60 to 1. 60 to 1. On the Keystone Pipeline. On the Keystone Pipeline. Took it to the back room. They lobbied their members of Congress. They lobbied their members of Congress. They dumped money into their campaign coffers. They dumped money into their campaign coffers. And they called it a done deal. They called it a done deal. But we made it come spectacularly undone. But we made it spectacularly undone. And we'll make this abomination. And we'll make this abomination. Spectacularly undone. Because spectacularly
one more speaker, then we're going to surround Dominion, okay? Our next speaker is Scott Price of the Public Policy Direct. He's Public Policy Director for Alliance for Progressive Values. Scott. Woo! Yeah, a little wet out here, huh? Hi, I'm Scott Price. I'm the Policy Director for APV. Um, I want to tell you how proud we are to be out here with you. Um, I wouldn't, I couldn't think of better people to stand out in the rain with than you guys. Woo! Give yourself a hand. Woo! I want to talk a little bit right now about money and politics and how Dominion affects the legislative process with its money. Um, in the United States, last year, the energy, um, energy companies spent about $134 billion in, ed in election finances. Here in Virginia, it's about $9 million. <laughs> Dominion is simply the, the largest investor in the political process in the state of Virginia. If you look at just about anybody in the political process and you look at who their top donor is, Dominion's in the top three for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I want to point out is that this cuts across pa um, party lines. Um, I would assume that Tom Farrell and most of the executives are Republicans, but they don't really care if who's in office as long as they have their money into them. Case in point. Dick Saslaw, a really nice guy, Democrat from Fairfax, etc. In the last 10 years, Dominion's given him $167,000. Robbery! The same goes for the Lieutenant Governor, Bill Bowling, who's a deciding vote this year in the Senate. $40,000 to him. Terry Kilgore, John Watkins, they all got big checks as well. What does this mean? What it means is that when bills come before them, those bills get killed. When bills come before them that they can't kill, they water them down and they, they take the teeth out of them. We're seeing this with the renewable energy portfolio standards again and again. Um, the fact is, is that until we get big corporate money out of our election system, we're going to have to live with the kind of crappy laws that they keep giving us. Yeah. Does everybody here know what Citizens United is? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to overturn that decision. We either yeah. need to do it through a constitutional amendment or we need to do it through a, the voting process. But we've got to get unlimited corporate money out of the election system. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give you some uh, contrast here. Last year, Dominion put about a million dollars into, into the election system here in the, in the, in the, um, in the state. Bear in mind, last year they made $2.8 billion. This is money they find between the cushions in their couch up in the executive uh, mansion there. The point is, is that they get this for the cheap. It, it, it's literally easy for them to afford this kind of money. We, it's money we don't have. Tom Farrell put $66,000 into elections last year out of his own pocket. Uh, you know, I, I would think that's higher than the budget for most of the organizations here. Yeah. The point is, we can't fight them on the, when it comes to money, but we can fight them where it counts at the ballot box. Yeah. You need to turn out, you need to vote, you need to hold candidates accountable for their position on energy. Clean energy is an issue that has to be paramount in this state. It's enormously important. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for coming out, and I want to tell you, we're down there, we're at the, we're at the GA every day down there. We are working hard for you. There are a lot of great organizations here. They're doing the same thing. You've got a voice down there. There's a way for us to change this. We can win. All right. Thank you, Scott. Are you guys ready? Yeah. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. I want you guys, before we're going to talk about logistics in just a second, I want you to yell so that they can hear you in this modern high rise. I want, let's yell together. We won't stop. All right? We ready? Won't stop. stop. We won't stop. We won't stop.
you so much. Really appreciate it. We're going to talk logistics now. We're going to get started. All right, real quick. We are going to fully surround the Dominion headquarters here in a minute. Two important things to recognize. We are going to stay on the public, public sidewalk. Secondly, we're going to stay in single file. Those two things need to be really clear. Public sidewalk, single file. So here's what we're going to do. This half of the crowd is going to form two single file lines. The head of the line is, up, is right here to the corner of the park. And you're going to follow the people with the seventh sign and the canal sign. So you see these really big signs on poster board. Hold them up high. We're going to form two lines right there. The other two lines are going to form facing that way on this side of the park. So this half, you're going to form two lines there. You're going to follow the people with the signs that say Perry Street and 8th Street. Woo! All right, so let's do that. We're going to mark. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to form a full circle. We're going to do a wave around the whole building. And then we're going to come back here. We're going to do one march around. We're going to come back here for closing remarks. So, onwards.
looks like. Show me what clean energy 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 looks like. This is what clean energy looks like. Please stay sore. You stay clean. 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 Please stay sore. All right, this is as loud as I can get. We're, right, we're going to take two more seconds to gather together. And then we have some final, just final closing comments. We're going to go have a party. Um, but I just want to say, you guys look unbelievably beautiful. Circling the venue. And I did a survey, and our youngest protester today was nine months years old. Nine months old, and our oldest is 78 years old. So we really cover the span. We are Virginia, and I just want to say thank you, thank you so much. And I want to introduce our final speaker, the new Virginia Policy Director for CCAN, Dewan Robinson. He comes to us from Iowa via Drake Law School, an incredible organizer, an incredible pol great policy experience. And we are really, really, really happy to have Dwayne on our on our team. Thank you so much. All right, hasn't this been a good rally? You guys, thank you so much for coming out. I want to thank our speakers. Uh, give a round of a hand uh, to all of our speakers today. They did fantastic. And thank you to all of you for coming out all across the state in this weather, in this rain, to show Dominion that we are serious about clean jobs and we are serious about a cleaner environment. So give yourselves a hand. Can I just have a couple, just a, just a few words? I know it's raining, I know it's cold, but thank you so much. We have a really important moment right now. And so I really don't want to waste it. I know you don't want to waste it. And so the question is, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next in this fight? It's not on. It's on. It's on. Just hold it right close to your mouth. All right, is that better? Yeah. All right, all right. So what are we going to do next in this fight? We are going to continue this fight. This rally is not an end. This rally is a beginning. It is a beginning, and the Chesapeake Climate Action Network is going to be here. We are going to be helping you organize in your communities. I am asking you to talk to your friends and neighbors, to talk to your family members, to talk to your legislators, to email them, to call them, to write letters to the editor. You are going to be our foot soldiers. The Chesapeake Climate Action Network can't be everywhere. This is a big state. We cannot be in every community. And so we have passed around pledge cards. I hope that you fill them out, give them back to us, and we will give you a little bit more of specific directions going forward of how we can continue this fight because we are serious for offshore wind and we are serious for solar power here in Virginia. I know you are. But there are three quick things that we can do within the next couple of months that are really going to make a difference. First, there is an event here in Richmond on April 14th. It's called the 99% Spring. Everybody heard of it? The 99% spring, 4th, April 14th, here in Richmond. Environmental organizations are going to partner with other organizations, and we're going to stand up against powerful interests like Dominion and other powerful interests here in the state. And so keep an eye out for that. Also, second, on May 5th, we will connect the dots. And what that is, it is a rally in communities all over the world. We will hold up a dot. And that dot will signal a connection between climate change and extreme weather. Yeah. And so we're really excited about that. That's on April 5th, and that's really important. May 5th. May 5th. May 5th. Sorry, May 5th. Lastly, May 8th is a really, really big day for the people behind us, Dominion, which means it's going to be an even bigger day for us, the environmental activists. Yes. They are having their shareholders meeting that day, and they're also 
going to un announce and unveil their 15-year plan for energy needs here in the state. That's their plan. We know their plan is going to be inadequate. And so we're going to organize and tell us about our plan, what our plan is for the future yeah. here in the state of Virginia. Yeah. And so keep an eye out for that. We'll be sending emails. We may be giving you some phone calls, but we're really, really excited about organizing for that. That's all I have. Thank you so much. We are headed to our after party location. It's a current restaurant. One more thing. One more thing. Sorry. Introduce Mike. Yeah. Hey, Dewan, Um. So, so we do we want to tell people where the after party is? Well, we want to take one more photograph. We're going to ask you to turn around in one second, take a photograph. Before that, Dewan, where we, where we meet for the after party? Current restaurant. It's on the orange sheet that we gave you. Current restaurant. It's on the orange sheet. So we're going to get out of the rain and go have a beer and have some food. So Dewan Restaurant. I mean, Dewan. Do you own it yet? Not yet. Not yet. What's a current restaurant? All right. Five blocks that way. Yeah, five blocks that way. So right now we want you to turn around and post for a photograph. Josh has got to take a picture. Josh, raise your hand. Hi, I'm right here. Oh. Alright guys, yeah, everyone just look that way, like opposite the building, and we have some people that are going to line up with some signs right in front of you, so just stay exactly where you are, please do not move.